Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that's within me, bless his holy name. God bless everybody. Thank you for joining us for another time of Sunday school as we're looking into the word of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Would you please take a moment and share our Sunday school lesson this morning? Thank you for joining us and sharing. I'm going to take the, do the same thing that I'm asking you to do, and that is share this lesson, this video, whether you're watching from YouTube or from Facebook. Would you please take a moment and share this video so that someone can join us for our lesson today, our study today, the beginning of freedom. And I believe it will be a blessing to you as well as to those who join us. So take a moment and share that with us. God bless everybody. And um, let's just take a moment to do that. God bless you. Those of you who are watching with us on YouTube, blessings to you. And let's just take a minute and do that. God bless you. I know that everybody's not having Sunday school, but we're grateful for those of you who are joining us and watching with us and uh, joining and sharing for Sunday school. We you know the word of the Lord is a, it will empower us and help us and strengthen us as we look into the word of the Lord and allow God to empower us with his word. You know, the, 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 the topic is uh, for our Sunday school is power for living, and we all need power so we can live abundant lives. Praise God. So we're going to get into our study, and I want to be able to share that with you this morning. S let's look. And our Bible basis, I'll go ahead and get started because I know I will, I'll um, carry on with this. But let's look a little bit. Our, our subject uh, this morning is beginning of freedom. And those of you who join and watch us with us with Grace for Today, we've been talking about the distinction, but and this kind of goes right along with that, but we're talking about the beginning of freedom for the children of Israel. And we know the story. We've been going through that and how God brought them out of Egypt and bringing them into freedom. And uh, when I read this, that song that... Uh, we sing or have sung in the past, talk about this is the joy that I've been waiting for. Uh, uh, we talk about step into the joy of the Lord, step into the freedom. God brings freedom to his people. He releases us from those things that held us hostage. And we know for a certain that the certainty that the people of God were in bondage, in bondage, in slavery, but he came that they might. And even we know in the New Testament, he tells us, Jesus said that I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He doesn't want us to be in bondage, to be in bondage to sin, to anything that holds us captive. He wants us free. He wants us free. I guess I asked you all to share, and I forgot to share myself, so let me go back and share. Hey, Sister Brandy, blessings to you. Let's share. Let me just take a moment and share. I, I, got, I got sidetracked because, you know, I get excited. So let me share, and uh, then we're going to get started. I forgot. I got busy, excited. So let's share there, and I'm going to share one more time, and then we'll be ready to get started. Bless God, hallelujah, because you know everybody wants to be free. Everybody needs to be free because the enemy's job is to make sure that we stay in bondage so that he can have control over our lives. But Jesus came to set us free. I'm free, praise the Lord. Some of us remember what it's like to be in bondage. And the children of Israel remember. They knew what it was like to be in bondage, but they struggled with understanding that the Lord was God was setting them free. Let's look at our scriptures. The Bible basis is found in Exodus chapter 14, verses 21 through 30. Let's read, let's look at that shortly. Our Bible truth is this. God creates a way out of bondage through Jesus Christ. How? Through Jesus Christ. God creates a way out of bondage through Jesus Christ. There is one way to God, that's through Jesus Christ. The memory verse says, thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Exodus chapter 14, 
verse 30. Lesson aim, by the end of the lesson, this is what we're our, per or our goal, we will describe how God made a way for the Israelites when there seemed to be none. We will appreciate the freedom we have in God's plan and list ways to promote freedom for those who are oppressed. So there are people still who are, uh, that are still in bondage, but there are ways to, that we need to promote that freedom to remind them that they are free. They can be free through Jesus Christ. Sometimes in church people think that there are just lists of do's and don'ts, but there's really the Lord comes to give freedom to us. He puts parameters for our protection, but God his word comes to liberate us. Let's read. Exodus chapter 14, verses 21 through 30. So thank you all for sharing as soon as you come on. Appreciate that. It says, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. This is when God divided the waters so that the children of Israel could walk through. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them, drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth, their, stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. What did the sea do? Returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots, and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them, but the children of Israel walked up on dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Look at God. Look at God. You know, when we've been talking about this particular passage, and we look at what God had promised Israel. He promised them in the beginning of, of Exodus. He promised to deliver them with a mighty hand. He promised to get rid of their enemies. And he brought the ten plagues to, to show them what he was going to do. You know, when we look at this, and I, I looked, I wrote down another uh, translation of uh, Exodus 14. Because I wanted to show us... Um, I wanted to make a point of looking at uh, another translation and how what God did, what it said. So I want to read this to you, and I want to get to our lesson as well, but I want us to see this. I want to read this, then we're going to go to our book, okay? Uh, verse 21 says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. You know, the thing is this. God told Moses, and I, I'm, I'm going to get to my point, but God told Moses at the very beginning, at the burning bush, remember this, at the burning bush, God told Moses, says, I'm going to be with you. Now, Moses had all his issues. Remember this. Moses had all his issues as to why he couldn't deliver the people of God from Egypt, from Pharaoh. Though they were crying out for a deliverer, God raised up Moses, saved his life. He was the one 
but he had all these reasons why he could not. But he was the one. God gave him Aaron to be his spokesperson. Moses transitioned and grew into this mighty man. And the people of God uh, understood. The people of God eventually understood and respected and honored and feared Moses and God. But here, Moses, without fear, without apprehensions, without uh, any second guessing, he obeyed God every single time as he grew in his faith and in his, his ability to understand. He stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up the Red Sea. The wind blew, and it dried up the sea floor. The floor of the, of the sea dried it up so that the children of Israel could walk through on dry land. In the middle of the ocean, the sea, in the middle of the sea, they walked across on dry land. The water was a wall. Millions of Hebrews, of Israelites, the sons here, they walked through on dry land. Miracle. God made a, a miracle for them where their peer, the sea was in front of them, Pharaoh's army behind them. God intervened. Let's look at that. God made a way where there appeared to be, that was the lesson name, remember? Describe how God made a way for the Israelites where, when there seemed to be none. Beloved, there will be seasons in our lives where there appear to be no way. We are in, as the old folk, as that saying goes, we're between a rock and a hard place. We don't know how God's going to get us out of this. We don't know how God can make a way out of this. There is an impossibility in front of us, and there is an adversary behind us. But God knows how to intervene and to go before us and make every crooked place straight. Hallelujah! So that we can go across. We can get through that difficulty with grace. He knows how to make a way. He took that Red Sea, dried it up so they could go across. The thing was this. The Egyptians thought they could go across just like the Israelites did. Your enemy may think they can use the same road that you did to cross as well. Beloved, that way is made just for you. God will make a way just for you. He will make a way just for you. When we look at the plagues in Egypt, in Israel, well, the plagues in Egypt, God was clear that there were things going to happen in Egypt that were not going to happen over in Goshen. God said, you're going to see there's going to be a distinction between Israel and Egypt. God says right here, the children of Israel went, went across on dry land, but by the time the Egyptians came across this sea, it was still a sea. It was just that God had made a way for them that nobody else was going to get the same benefit. There are benefits with your name on it. Hallelujah. There are benefits with your name on it that nobody else is going to get. I think I'll type that in there myself. There are benefits with your name on it. that others will not get. they just not going to get it. They're not going to get it. Even if they try to come the same direction, it just won't work for them. It won't work for them. It just won't work. We need to remember that. We need, because God put that there for you. God put that there for you. God put that there for you. He put it there for you. It's yours. And when we try, when others try to be and to do what God has laid out for you, it doesn't work for them. It doesn't work for them. We need to remember that, that God has a way that, that may seem like it's going to work for somebody else. It doesn't work for them. It works for you. It works for you. It works for you. And when we can accept that God puts a distinction between us and them, 
We don't need to feel bad about that distinction. We don't need to feel bad that he makes a way for us that nobody else can get. His way. Here it is. He says, and, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with the waters like a wall to them on their right hand, right and, and their left. The Egyptians set out in pursuit. They still didn't understand that God was for the Israelites. God was showing favor to the Israelites. God was giving uh, certain privileges to the Israelites. All uh, uh, the Egyptians set out in pursuit of all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen, and went into the sea after them. What kind of people were going to go after God's folk, even though they had seen the plagues in Egypt, knowing that God had already given something special to Israel? They were going to go into the sea as if they were going to get the same benefit. Bless God, hallelujah. It just didn't work that way. Let's read and see. During the morning watch, the Lord looked down at the Egyptian forces. Now, if we had read before, and this lesson had covered the beginning of chapter 14, you would have seen that the angel of the Lord, or that God, had already put a cloud between the Israeli forces and the Egyptian forces so that they couldn't even see each other. God was already protecting Israel. God was already making sure Egypt couldn't even find them. Here, he says, during the morning watch, verse 24, the Lord looked down at the Egyptian forces from the pillar of fire and cloud and threw the Egyptian forces into confusion. I think the King James Version, it calls, it used a different term. It says, it troubled the host of the Egyptians. God will trouble your enemies. Hallelujah. You don't have to trouble your enemies. God will throw, the, throw them into confusion. God will trouble your enemies himself. He will trouble your enemies. He will trouble your enemies. He caused, verse 25 says, he caused their chariots, chariot wheels to swerve and made them drive with difficulty. Remember, it's still dry ground. But their wheels began to drive with difficulty. Did the Israeli, did the Hebrews chariot, did their wheels drive with difficulty? No. But the Egyptians did. They should have seen that as a warning. You better get out of there. You better get out of there. He caused their chariot wheels to swerve and made them drive with difficulty. And then they said, let's get away from Israel. The Egyptians said, because the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. They finally got a clue. God is fighting for them. But he's fighting for them against us. We're in a difficult spot. We're in the middle of a sea. We're in a difficult predicament. If we don't get out of here, this sea could swallow us up. This is not normal. It's not normal. This isn't going to work for us. It's not going to work for us. And verse 26, here it is again. The Lord said to Moses, the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand. Moses did a lot of stretching out his hand. But anytime he stretched out his hand, God moved. Hallelujah. Anytime he stretched out his hand, God moved. Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back on the Egyptians, on their chariots and horsemen. Moses, without question, obeyed the word of God. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at daybreak, the sea returned to its normal depth. The, the King James Version says its strength. Its strength. While the Egyptians were trying to escape from it, the Lord threw them into the sea. Sometimes we feel sorry for our adversaries, but God gave the Egyptians ample opportunities 
to leave Israel alone. They chose not to. Here, let me read a little bit more, then we're going to go to our book and look at the, aim that, the aims that are there. He says in verse 28, the water came back and covered the chariots and horsemen, plus the entire army of Pharaoh that had gone after them into the sea. Not even one of them survived. Not one of them survived. Not even one of them survived. God annihilated the entire Egyptian army, including Pharaoh. But the Israelites had walked through the sea on dry ground with waters like a wall to them on their right and their left. That day, the Lord saved Israel from the power of the Egyptians. That day, the Lord saved Israel from the power of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. God rescued Israel. It was the beginning of freedom for them. The Egyptians they had seen, they would see no more. They weren't going back to where they had come from. I wanted to add verse 31 for good measure. It says this, and this is the Christian Standard Bible. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you what translation I was reading. When Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. They feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. God showed himself strong. He delivered Israel with a mighty hand. With a mighty hand. We have to remember this. God moved for Israel. He will move for us. He is the same God. Hallelujah! He's the same God. God. What he's looking for is to show himself strong for folk who will believe him. Remember, God moved for Israel because they began to cry out to him. They began to cry out to him because of the burden that that had been put upon them. Remember, they had stayed in Goshen longer than they should have. They had become comfortable in a place that they should not have been. They were only there because there was a famine in the land. And Joseph had been governor. God had sent him ahead of them to prepare a place for them for a temporary place, but God had already given them a promise of Canaan land. But they became comfortable in a place where they shouldn't have been. Let's look a little further. Now, one of the aims here is that the students will know that many people may find themselves about to lose hope while seeking freedom from spiritual bondage. We must keep our hope in what God has promised in his word. We must look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The author and finisher of our faith. We have to remember that just like God made a way in this difficult, almost impossible situation for Israel, God is still a way maker. He is still a way maker. Hallelujah. He is still a way maker. We must put the scripture, there's a scripture that says, uh, why art thou downcast, my soul? Hope thou in God. Our expectation must be in him. Our expectation must be in him. Our expectation, our hope 
are looking for good, are expecting good, must rely, must be toward him. We must keep our look to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help comes from him. If we have hope in this world only, we are of all men most miserable. We can't only have hope in this world. This world is going to pass away. If, the, if Israel had hope just in Pharaoh, just in the Egyptians, just in Egypt, if they, even in the time of Joseph, only had hope in that system, then they would have been miserable. Because God only designed that just for them for a season. But they were there for 400 years. Or how many every years? 400 years, I believe it was. Longer than they should have been. Beloved, when we find ourselves in difficult situations, looking for freedom, Scripture says we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. Freedom comes through knowing the truth. The truth comes from the word of God. Here's my Bible, the word of God. So when we know the word of God, we know that we get freedom. We get freedom. We get freedom. We get, but when we don't know the word of God, when we don't believe the word of God, when we don't understand the word of God, then we don't get free. We don't get free. We don't get free. Then we remain in bondage. So we have to look to where our hope is. Our hope and our expectation of good must be in the word of God and what he has promised in his word. Here, our next aim is that students will learn that God's will for liberation and freedom for the Israelites was revealed when the Red Sea opened up. God says, listen, you are in a difficult spot, but I've already got a plan. Remember, God is never surprised or caught off guard. He already knows what our tomorrow holds. We just have to seek him for it. We have to seek him for his will. We just have to know that he's not surprised. He already has a way of escape. He already has a way of escape. We have to trust him to know what his plan is. We're many times just falling out having a pity party rather than trusting God to, be, to make a way and open that door for us. He has a way. He has a way. Let's trust him for his way. And yes, there will be seasons. There will be seasons where it looks like it is dark. It is a difficult time. But God knows the way that we take. He is trying to grow us up and mature us. When you look in the life of the children of Israel, you see that more often than not. Where they were immature, they did not, well, you know that from looking at the scriptures. <laughs> you know from looking at the scriptures because you saw that even when they got to the promised land and they saw the giants, but they had the proof of the, the land flowing with milk and honey, but because of their fear, and they're refusing to believe that God could take them in. They didn't go in. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years to all those who refused to believe God died. Beloved, that shouldn't be our testimony. We should be the ones who believe God to take us into our promised land. To take us into our promised land. Let's read on. Our time is almost gone. Here, our next aim is that, so, and this is just saying that when the Red Sea opened up, it was clear, should have been clear to them that the Lord wanted to liberate them, to free them. Not for them to go back into bondage. Though they did say that. We could have just stayed in Egypt. You brought us out here to kill us. Because sometimes when we get in difficult positions, we just want to do what is um, what we feel second nature to us. But God is calling us out of that. 
to trust him for greater, to trust him for more. We don't want to do what's comfortable for us. We don't want to go back to Egypt. We want to go into the promised land. We want to go to where God is calling us to. So even when it seems dark, even when it seems difficult, let's not regress. Let's progress. Let's progress. Let's keep going forward. Let's look at our next aim. Students will know that he is the same God who shows them forms of deliverance from sin and violence in their community. God is faithful to his word. Through his great display of power, he delivered the children of Israel by his mighty hand. Imagine what our world would be like if we truly believed God would do such things, um, do such a display today in our communities to deliver us from violence and oppression. God is no respecter of persons. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He left this story as a testament of his greatness. Today, Yahweh continues to prove he is the same God who shows us his care and mercy, including forms of deliverance beyond our imagination. What the enemy will do is make you believe that God is not a deliverer. He is. It's easy for us to believe that God won't, God can't. But beloved, God will and God can. And just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean that he can't. God is looking for people who will believe him in spite of what you've seen and what you've heard. Our last aim was students will begin to seek the mind of the Lord and what he wants to do in and through them, <coughs> excuse me, to impact their community for his glory. Beloved, that is what we're called to do. Sometimes we want to play it safe and stay within the four walls of our church or stay within the four walls of our own homes. But beloved, God has called us to impact our communities, to impact our nation, to impact our state. We are called to impact. To impact. What you've got is not to be hidden under a bushel. Do men light a candle and put it under a bushel? No, they put it on a candlestick and they put it somewhere so it can light the world around them. We are called to light the nations. You are called the children of God. We are called to show the world that there is victory. There is freedom through Jesus Christ. They can too. They can be free. We are called to tell the world there is freedom through Jesus. There is freedom through Jesus. We can bring the world closer to him. We can bring the world closer to God. And we are called to do that. We are called to do that. We are called to do that. Can you do that? We can do that. And I believe that as we do that, we can honor God and honor his word. Listen, I'm going to go ahead and share next Sunday's Sunday school lesson so that you will have it. And um, it's our last lesson for this quarter, but I want to make sure you have it and you don't miss anything. Uh, it's the last one for this quarter, but we'll have, um, we'll have, we'll, we'll share the one. We are ready for next Sunday, next quarter already, but we want to make sure that you have what you need. God bless everybody, but have what you need so that you can prepare for uh, our next quarter as well. Beloved, God has called us to more. God has called you to more. Don't you ever think that God has not called you to greater. He has called you to greater. He has called you to do more. And don't play it safe. This is not the season for safe. This is the season for us to believe that God is asking us to do more for the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God. It looks like we're frozen on Facebook, but listen, it, we want to make sure that we are doing all that we can in the kingdom of God. God wants us. He has called us to be free. He has called us to be free. And we are to share that freedom with someone else. To share that freedom with someone else. He has called you to be free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has called you to be free. And we're to share that with the world. The world needs to know there is freedom through Christ Jesus. He has called you. And as you get that, let's share that with somebody else. 
My time is almost gone, but I want you to understand it. We are called to let the world know that Jesus came to set men, women, boys and girls, no matter their age, no matter what they're encountering, nothing is new to God. He's never caught off guard. He wants us to be free. He wants us to be free. Praise God and hallelujah. Our lesson for next week is the beginning of the tabernacle. Beginning of the tabernacle. And you know, when we look into this, God wants us to understand and believe and receive for ourselves what he has promised in his word for our lives. Beloved, go ahead and read our lesson. It's in Exodus chapter 40. Go ahead and read that. Let the Lord speak to you. I'm going to pray. And uh, share the video, allow somebody else to be blessed by it. Father, we thank you so much for your word and what you're doing in us. Stir our hearts and our minds to know that you've called us to liberty. You've called us to freedom. Help us to walk in it and receive it for ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. So it is. Amen. God bless everybody. hope that you will join us next Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. If you don't have a church home, join us at 10 a.m. for worship service. We'll be starting momentarily at 10 a.m. And uh, share this video and encourage somebody else to join us. Until next time, God bless you.